Many people think, because I do so many projects in Prague and I visit Prague so frequently, that my ancestors were from Prague. As far as I know, they weren't. My ancestors were from Poland and from uh, Bessarabia. I remember drawing since I was four years old, but I did extremely well in uh, school and where I grew up in Queens, if you did extremely well in school, you didn't become an artist, you became a lawyer or a doctor. So I wound up in medical school. In medical school, I had intended to be a surgeon, but because I started to draw and publish more, I decided to choose a specialty that would allow me the time to pursue my drawings and surgery would not be that specialty, so I chose dermatology. And uh, dermatology is a specialty that's a visual specialty. It, it demands great visual awareness. As, as an artist, I tended to have an aptitude towards that specialty. N not only do I love opera because of the music, but it's a visual performance. And um, the scenery, the costumes, it's... I. I listen to classical music when I draw, primarily Mozart. It's been said that listening to Mozart makes you smarter. And so I like to uh, draw to Mozart. But then again, it's also been said that 15 minutes after you stop listening, you become stupid again. So it, it's not something that remains with you. The first project I did for the Met Opera, it's Mozart and Costumes from his Operas. It's a box set. So it's, it's Mozart as Pasha Salim from The Abduction of the Seraglio. Mozart as Papageno from The Magic Flute. Mozart as Carabino from The Marriage of Figaro. Mozart as Don Giovanni. Mozart portraits. Each one looks different. He has a different face in each one. And some of them were done posthumously. These are the characters interacting with musical notes. So it's yeah, my parents Donna before. Anna, after her father is murdered, she wears mourning clothes throughout the opera. I didn't want to do something black, I did it purple. And she goes masquerading to Don Giovanni's party. So she's masquerading behind a musical note. This is uh, Donna Elvira as a, as a prisoner of her love for Don Giovanni. She sings, she's shrieking, it's a sharp notation. Zerlina, the, the aria, give me your hand, and it's her hand on an eighth note. Leporello with the famous aria, listing Don Giovanni's conquest, 1003 in Spain. So the eighth note becomes the list of the conquest. Don Giovanni with a bass clef, the Commendatore, who comes back at the end as the statue over his grave after Don Giovanni mockingly invites the statue to dinner and he shows up and winds up taking Don Giovanni to hell. And animals on the tops of the, uh, of the violin and so these are towers. This is the, the clock tower from Prague and these are from churches. This is from Strachow Monastery. And then the Prague coat of arms I have with a violin bow instead of a sword symbolizing that music can be as powerful as, as a weapon of conflict. Constanza, Mozart's wife, said that Mozart particularly loved the architecture of Prague, particularly, especially the Baroque churches. This is St. Nicholas Church on the Old Town Square, where there are concerts of Mozart's music. Here are, Mozart, are notes ascending to heaven, and here are um, little cherubs holding uh, parts of an organ. La Clemenza de Tito, which was Mozart's last opera, was commissioned for the, the crowning of uh, Emperor Leo, Leopold II as King of Bohemia. So this is the Estates Theatre where it has world premiere in 1791. And this is the Arch of Titus, honoring Titus from Rome. So here it's a juxtaposition of two unexpected images. There was a funeral mass held for Mozart in Vienna a few days after his burial, and uh, it said that parts of Mozart's unfinished Requiem were played, and there were maybe a few hundred people. But in Prague, which loved Mozart more than any other city, 
4,000 people attended Mozart's Mass in St. Nicholas Church in Malastrana, and 120 musicians played for free, and the church bells tolled for a half hour all over Prague. The Metropolitan Museum has reproduced my work 13 times. On three separate days, my, one of my paintings was the art object of the day for the Met, Op for the Met Museum, considering they have a million objects. It's been a great honor, so it's, it's much more than I ever would have fantasized.